The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather in the house of the Lord under the care of God's heavenly arms. We gather and celebrate that we have a home in the Christian community. We gather in this house where there is plenty of room at God's table. We are called to love our enemies and pray for those who give us a hard time. We are called to love like Jesus loved. We see the presence of Christ in community, in the word, and the meal. The grace of Christ calls us to bear the cross. Praise Praise God. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God of compassion, you invite us into your way of forgiveness and peace. 
Lead us to love our enemies and transform our words and deeds to be like his through whom we pray. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is found in Leviticus 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, including Zion in Rockford, Illinois, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyards bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. And you shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal. You shall not keep. You shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The Word of God. We read responsively Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold. Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. 
Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. The Word of God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your, enemy, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of our Lord. 
Okay, got it. Thank you. Well, good morning. What a wonderful day to celebrate our Scandinavian heritage of so many Zion members. We look forward to a program where we share history and culture from Sweden, Norway, and Denmark with a wonderful meal with ethnic dishes and favorites. I, for one, am learning a lot about Scandinavian heritage living here in the Midtown area of Rockford. There's so many interesting traditions that are handed down, language, food, customs, and cultures. And as a newcomer, there's one thing I know for sure. I enjoy singing about Ludafisk a lot more than I enjoy eating it. <laughs> oh, Ludafisk, oh, Ludafisk, how fragrant your aroma. Yeah. Well, what's most important about this Scandinavian festival today is not the greatness of Sweden or Norway or Denmark. It is about the diversity of our mosaic community here in Zion. It is this commitment to be an inclusive community that welcomes all, regardless of differences, whether it be age, race, gender, class, or orientation. This event is part of a series of cultural celebrations. In the past, we've celebrated Burmese culture and African American, and this is one more tradition in that series. It is all honoring the diversity of this community. Without this perspective of honoring all the cultures, these celebrations can actually have an effect of isolating people and excluding them who don't share the heritage. Just like my greeting in Swedish, good morning, and the joke about Ludafisk, you know, fish that's prepared, Scandinavian way, um, these things can exclude people if they don't know about what we're talking about. They bond us together with a closeness we share, but they can exclude people who don't know about those things. So it's important that we look at this as a way of sharing culture, not expecting people to join us for knowing everything that we know. The Apostle Paul speaks of problems of an exclusive community in his letter to the Corinthians. It seems that there had been divisions in the Corinthian church over which leader was best. This childish quarreling disrupted the church because people were associating themselves with one leader or the other rather than associating themselves with God, who is the reason for their church. Paul writes that the foundation of the church is built on Jesus Christ. From that one foundation, various leaders add to the building of the individual churches in various ways and in different places. There's no need for quarreling or jealousy when the church is based on God's identity alone. Now Jesus also speaks of this exclusive faith community problem in our gospel text today. Jesus tells the disciples to go beyond the tradition of loving one's neighbor as, and loving one's enemy based on our first reading from Leviticus. Jesus points out that anyone can be nice to others who are beneficial in return, even the tax collectors. I think it's interesting that Jesus talks about the tax collectors because they were considered enemies of a lot of people because they worked for the Roman government and they often extorted extra money from their fellow Israelites. Jesus seems to be prodding the people when he says, look, even the people you detest are nice to others who are like them. Jesus ex extends the law to say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus continues by asking, if you only greet your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even Gentiles do the same? Gentiles are another great example of people who are considered outsiders to people of the faith of Judaism. 
Jesus is calling his disciples to go beyond the expected, to love those who are not known or even those that are adversarial. That is a love that people notice. That is a love that's not rooted in oneself, but is grounded in God. Seeing all people in the image of God as we were created. A love that transcends boundaries that separate and isolate people, like ethnicity or status or gender. If we just think about the extravagant love of Jesus in the gospel stories, they're so opposite of what is expected. Jesus saw people for who they were deep inside. He loved people beyond the label that society gave them. He associated with people who were outcasts by loving them and addressing their needs, as he does for us. He feeds us, heals us, teaches us, and forgives us. He gives freely without expectation and any return. Jesus calls people back into community and helps restore our relationships with one another. Jesus gave of his life, and he asked for forgiveness for those who killed him. That is a love that changes the world. And that's the love that we are called to be a part of here and now. We hear of Jesus' call to be inclusive, and we want to love people. Even though most faith communities describe themselves as welcoming to all, it has been said that Sunday mornings are one of the most segregated time of all. There have been so many denominations, so many different faith traditions and communities, and we are isolated from one another. What happened to that inclusive, transforming love of Jesus? Christina Cleveland, a social psychologist and associate professor, professor at Divinity School of Duke, has written this in her book about disunity in Christ, uncovering the hidden forces that keep us apart. Just as language, culture, and customs of our heritage bond us together, they exclude others, and so it is with our faith communities. We tend to bond closely with those that are like us, and therefore we exclude people who are not like ourselves. We resist changing because we like the way things are. If you think about it, there's a Lutheran culture that we have here that might be very different for someone who has never experienced it. There are certain words we use like, what's a narthex, right? Yeah. Um, there are songs we sing, customs, things that we use that can be very confusing and isolating to people who don't know about them. That doesn't mean we can't use those things, but it just means we need to be aware that not everyone has this common background. There are ways that we can help people feel more comfortable explaining things in the bulletin or offering assistance to someone who might not recognize what is, needs to happen next in the service. But even more than helping to explain customs and rituals, it is so important that we genuinely welcome people who are with us. To welcome someone doesn't mean just simply to greet them. It means to get to know them and care about their well-being. It means if we're genuinely interested in the person, we learn about them and their life experience. By talking with them, we learn about them and they learn about us so that we can respect our differences and our similarities. Oftentimes, faith communities end up with people who are just like them because that is what's comfortable. People who are different are often pressured to leave or conform. 
But to have different thoughts and ways of doing things is essential to keep us from stagnating, to keep us from staying in that safe, comfortable zone. I thought about it when we were singing ancient words today. Changing me, changing you. Sometimes it's not very fun to change. We don't always want that. But isn't that what Christ calls us to do? Sometimes someone with a different outlook can help us look beyond what we're comfortable and used to. It helps us change when we're tempted to keep everything in the status quo. Learning about other faiths and visiting other faith communities can help us be open to different ways of doing things. We may not agree with everything, but we can respect those differences and similarities and join together in the unity that we have in Christ, in God. We don't have to isolate ourselves from someone we disagree with. We can stay in respectful dialogue and to keep talking with people and understanding their point of view instead of walking away. We don't have to convince someone that we are right and they are wrong. As long as we are grounded in our faith in God as our foundation, the differences that we have are less essential than all of those other things. The unity in God is what we seek. So as we celebrate our Scandinavian festival today, let us remember that we're gathered here as children of our Heavenly Father, who gives sun and rain to all. There's no distinction. Our identity is rooted in God's mercy and love through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. Anyone who walks through our doors is first and foremost a person created in the image of God. Anyone we meet in the street or on the store is a child of God's love, and even if they don't know it or show it. From this foundation built on God's love, we celebrate our similarities and our differences. It's not about what nationality is the best or what faith denomination is right. We can still be in community with someone who has a different viewpoint or tradition from ourselves. Being in relationship with others means that we are in relationship with others as Jesus calls us to be in an inclusive community. I want to end with Eugene Peterson's version of the message from the ending of this passage in Matthew. Jesus tells us, in a word, what I'm saying is, grow up. Your kingdom subjects, now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives toward you. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury or pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel. to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. 
in giving of ourselves that we receive and in dying 